につけたり修羅道とは倒すことかにつけたり我悪気が説となり目の前の敵に全てを斬る Samurai Spirit, the game that invented the super bad in fighting games. Requires a great mental game, millimetric precision, the rain control, and an enormaticism. Let the bloodbath begin. During this video, I will introduce the 30 characters in order of selection. Each of their moves, with all exception, starting with their neutrals. This is not a guide on how to play each chapter, but rather a guide to get to know each one. So I'll make a quick note and there is a big pause showing the neutrals before moving on the special moves. It's not going to be talking during every moment of the explanation. As a suggestion, review all the attacks as I demonstrate them in other situations, especially the three slashes and kick. Both in rage and in characteristics. Standing, running, jumping, crouching, combo, blocking, and even whiff. Distant use skills, blah blah blah, footsie, blah blah blah, rage, blah blah blah, pain. In case there are serious errors in the subtitles, you will find clarifications to avoid trying to re blob the video. All 30 will be marked with rage symbols to show their difficulty from 5 points. The more rage marks, the easier. You can look for the chapter you want with the times in the description below. Now to wield the cold steel. Mishamoto Musashi, the main character, the Ronin who seeks to be a mighty warrior. Yeah, he's not even a samurai. Good start, good start. Haomaru, or Aomaru, is a shoto and has everything on the list. A simple, straightforward character with good buttons and good damage. Perfect for new players as well as experts. Unarmed Universal Overhead. Got a standard projectile You can combo it, don't even try it Very damaging anti-air And Rune Inversion 2, excellent for Mystic Hunting. Sex Battle Punch, not only is good because it's an armed, but also because science doesn't explain how it reflects projectiles. And um, by the way, we can also do projectile feints, that's right. She didn't clean. A real running. We also have an advanced to punish projectiles. Well measured, it cannot be a better tool. His signature move is both version of his anti-air. Lot of hits. Although his super are not exactly good and here. No, not even with that huge air. Yeah. 
Hey, it's the girl from SNK Hero Instinct Team Frenzy. Probably no one ever. Nakoruru, even being one of the most famous faces of the franchise, is not an easy challenger. Short range on neutrals and very fast punishes. Although without too much damage. A practical aerial takedown and wall bosses improve our Oki a lot. Not to mention that she also has an air to air grab. Her way of advancing and warping always causes knockdown. There really is a lot of Oki. We can use Mamakaha projectile to compensate for its lack of range. Be careful with this input because it has three moves sharing the same directions. This move again, but horizontally. The blanket in case you get cold. And flying which, besides looking adorable, it allows us several options of aerial mix-up. Although, of course, not only is not eternal, but it's also very punishable. If this wasn't obvious, it's a projectile reflector. The rage move is of course her diagonal advance, but also the aerial version. Be careful when using this, it doesn't affect as much rain as it looks. Her super special is hit confirm after running a good distance. The Phantom Thief, Karasu Tengu, is the protagonist of this version and dude, he has anger issues. This character specializes in airplay and abusing his attack range. Yashamaru, unlike the ninjas and priestess, doesn't need walls. He can double jump himself. Excellent for casting knockdown, but seriously, beware of doing this by mistake. Oh, and yes, air game. Also by air, why not? This move is especially useful to cause good damage and prepare many options, but his best part is the cross he can create. He has many distances, measure them well. His projectile is only airborne, but as dangerous as it is, it is very rewarding and has multiple angles. In addition, all his moves are affected by his Rage or Rage Blast, 
Yes, all three. His weapon flick unique is multi projectiles that will also have extra damage and hits in case of rage explosions. Also, his super special works well as an anti. -air. Puppy, he has a master who will son so much that you will question if the archer you saw is the real sonner. Our ninja is an American who came to the east to learn the arts of the samurai and became a ninja. How clear you are, Galford. Sign so if you think Galford hurts a little, no, it's just that Herwig takes less damage passively. Galfo can use readily his entire arsenal of moves even when unarmed, with the exception of both supers. Bouncing of walls, aerial gap, yep, a real ninja. Of course, the famous Isuna drop, come and grab. His standard projectile is very handy for starting with Sonic. And for counter zoning, we can simply teleport to the opponent heads even from behind. I'll throw the machine, as I say, is Puppy, who can attack with guy for presses up while projectors or advance with his Isuna drop. His weapon of extending and super special, eh, nothing out of this war, but we can get to catch someone who shall be wrong. With the ability to cure war hunger with apples while suffering from tuberculosis, Tachibana Ukyo has one of the most terrifying ranges on his neutral in the game. Also has the least gravity affected jump in the entire game. He can use his apples to create pains, fast forward to press in punishment, and cause a lot of damage. Or bring the ingredients for a cake. His air technique is undoubtedly his most powerful move, not only because it takes advantage of gravity and causes knockdown, but we can use it to cover our retreat or hunt rushdown attempts. Heck, he can even do it in Targany. It's definitely super useful, but this must be practiced. Also, we have a way to advance because clearly you will notice that we will have no way to get close if not running. His signature move is to make what is already good improve too much. And he's super advanced enough to use them as punishment and even as anti air. Oh, 
京四郎The Dance of Death has entered the sea and spent the entire budget on makeup. Yoshiro has a very full arsenal of neutrals and a fairly low air gravity as well. It's varied enough to catch your opponent off guard. Although the curiosity is finally that he can walk crushing. We have a standard ground level projectile. A series of anti aerials that advances and cover a lot of space, but be careful because the recovery is huge. And then the fire kick. Good idea, no. But also a bit dangerous. The fire break can serve as a short range pressure tool beside stopping projectiles. But not only we can do anti air, we can do them in reverse, and yes, it also recovers a lot. Just like Ukyo, we can do it during a backdash. The frog is a command grab with good distance, very decent. His signature technique is a double fire kick. Good damage, not up. Yoshiro is a character that can take advantage of his range and size of attacks at all times. This weapon flicking can be easily defended, but if a single hit goes in, it's disarming for sure. Even with his back turned. Would you like him to use the weapon here? <sighs> You wish you were the cat if you know what I mean. Master Shubei is a somewhat stationary shot up with practical buttons and defensive talent. His projectile is at ground level like many others. But he can hit multiple times, especially at close range. The anti-air is also somewhat particular because it confirms the initial hit on the ground and then jumps. If we are eager to mash, we can use his sword machine gun. It's not like art of fighting, this is not a hit confirming animation. It's all his own hits. Shubei has three counterattacks, one for each direction, devastating damage. In. The anti air being the lightest and the medium being the strongest. Know that you can't counter attack kicks. Curiously, his overhead does not take advance like the rest, quite useful to control position. His anti air is his single thing to move and throws the opponent to the other side. The weapon flick technique is not only multi hit, but it's still all the vertical space on the screen. 
Cuando el Super Special Technique is a Confirmed Hit while running, you can confirm it against a jump. Tamu, tamu. The only thing bigger than Tam Tam is his button. And Tam Tam, for all practical purposes, is taller than any human being in the NBA. Tam Tam's whole game is to sound in both ways possible with its massive size and multiple hits. He can perform a mashing attack that becomes hit of him, but beware, this can be measured and should be Although you can also move around the stage chasing in this way. As an ace up your sleep, you can have a command grab so it's time. Especially useful after attacking so many times. This low kick attack can not only go through the screen, but attacks directly underneath. Quite a thing. But they can also charge the opponent in shooting. Phase. Skulls will probably be our most used move and can be launched as projected recas, designed the direction in rounds of up to three. But be careful, Tam Tam is very fast. This other projector can serve as a punishment for any position if it was measured. It is also our flagship attack, as great use of rage in counter attack. The weapon flick technique is also practically the same projectile but much more insecure in blocking. Finally, the super special works as a grab, but be careful with the angle, it's quite problematic. I hope you didn't want to choose the serious ninja because he's the cool ninja. Because congratulations, you choose one of the most, if not the most, difficult character in the game. Han So has some of the most unique neutrals in the game, especially his heavy slash running. And as a ninja like Galfor, he doesn't mind not having a sword in hand. Was jump? Sure. Air to air grab? Ready. Is una drop? Yep. But running? Also, yes. Shuriken. In the air and with a mouth basset on bottom strength. Teleport to four different positions for all your set plays. And while we are at the opponents, hit or feet, let not miss. 
Fake teleport. Yes, shoes. Don't try it with a kick. The trunk trick. There you have it, and it's quite difficult. Be careful. A ball of fire slowly running all over the stage. Alright, what else? And of course, a huge anti-air firestorm pillar. Yeah, it's a hit confirmed, so ain't twice. Yori Shagami with Katana is a Shoto offensive pressure machine. While he's a Shoto, his playstyle is constant offensive aggression and causing PTSD to players when they get him out. For starters, we have a Rekka. It has different range based on button strength, and like almost any Rekka, it is in a series of 3. This can create certain offensive rules, but the most important thing to note is which combos are real combos. Some can do switch sides, and others are not real combos, so be careful when putting pressure on them. His projector doesn't cover the entire screen, but it can allow us a little extra pressure if we hold the bottom, causing a double hit. Or take advantage of the opponent moment of defense to apply a classic command grab. You can use a series for real Sakasaki style strikes that turn into a grab from the hit confirm or an anti-air to improve his defense. His signature technique is his anti-air like almost every good Shoto and applies hits based on the strength of the button. Spoiler, no. His super special don't hit anti-air. If you're through this charter was a grappler, I have good news and bad news. The bad news is that there are no grapplers in this game. The good news is that he does have a command grab. Earthquake is an ninja with the two eyes that uses his obesity to mitigate the damage he received. He literally takes less damage than the rest of the chart. His movement speed, to no one's surprise, is slow. 
but it's a spray hope fuck he does like that. He's a ninja. I was very serious. He can wall chop too. And if you think I'm discriminating against him because he's fat, no, he already does that. This is his move. Fire break, cause knockdown, and gives good Oki in general, besides stopping projectiles. Teleport ninja? Yes, and he's very good at design. A command grab. Very close. Almost blew it. Probably what you were looking for. Its dive attack is quite good use since its attack in secrets. So someone trying to attack in between them will certainly take damage. But someone able to do just defense. But without doubt, his best punishment is his rolling attack, which is done by mashing as much as possible. As you will notice that I don't just get it. And yes, this is his signature attack, but if he confirms the obvious that he'll put the opponent in the corner very easily. Something particular about Herco is how his weapon flick technique works. We can move well enter this animation, but it's a single hit of him. So if one of all these punches hits, then he attacks. I can't believe it, it's not an idea. The quinta social version of the game. She is an athletic as she's legal, with very good power at medium and short range. She is undoubtedly the best sonar killer in the game and has tools that require some precision. Like her stunning kick that goes quite high, or her crunchy heavy slash that goes quite far. Her teleport has three positions, on the spot, forward and back. It can go through the opponent and makes you intangible for a moment, but I will count it only to dodge attack on last day of great recovery. We have this kick that gives you a switch side, it is fast and useful to get out of the corner. With a similar input, but backwards, Shiki reaches the opponent with a command grab. This is without doubt the biggest problem since mission the pirouette is not at all comfortable. Some Shoto with Tatsu as well. Very effective against projectile and covers a great distance. No, it only hits once. An anti aerial. One, two, and three hits. Very useful to cover all jumping needs. Finally, the chase with knockdown. Very good to optimize damage. This signature technique has a continuation, but in both cases, it can be very risky.
her weapon flick technique is a combination of hits. Nothing out of this world, but you might catch someone shot. But her super special is more useful. She can summon chains specifically where the opponent is. As long as the opponent is not jumping or blocking, they will always reach it. Have you heard the term Wing Condition? You could say that Yoshitora is a select member of the group. His style of play includes an absurd amount of strikes, very useful to punish or cover good area, but somewhat bad against an opponent at level of perfect defense. Especially when his heavy slashes hit so many times. His abilities are not too spectacular, but having so many tools make him very powerful. Let's start with an anti air. Generic. Then we have a hiccup in this unnecessary long sequence of cuts. Yes, it takes forever. A ah, way to advance an attack. Quite useful because it allows you to stop certain attacks. A command grab. Why not? Welcome to SK. Aerial takedown. What makes it interesting is that we can cancel the universal overhead in this move and save the risk of jumping. And his signature move running and attacking, depending on the button, the direction of the attack. So the rage system works differently, and here the middle button is used for extra damage. Now, the famous win condition. If you were following his attack, you will notice that at no time is gonna use the long katana on his wrist. That's because for that you need to confirm at least one of each special move. Then the magic happens. The magic of making almost 80% of life in melee. His weapon flick technique is quite interesting and is a low, and the rage is visually deceptive because of the special effect. Although his super special looks like a command grab, no, it's a hit confirm like many others, but he has a gimmick. If you manage to confirm, you automatically gain access to the seventh sword.
We all are eat of katanas, sword, and flourishes all look alike. So let's not make that shot, okay? She's one of the best walking anti air in the game and can keep pressure on practically with you moving from the place. First move is hit this triangle, which we sonnet the life of our opponent with his huge size. Ah, we can't even call it the all two even boss. Advancing from below, we have a switch side sweep with a throw all over the screen. Her anti air is very fast, but at the same time, it lags horizontally, so it's purely defensive. This tap has such an exceptional range from mid distance punishments, and not to mention the safety of attacking from so far away. Her best punishment is her thrower thrust that requires magic. As I say with this triangle, which is also a signature move, we can really abuse it to ruin our opponent's life. The weapon flick technique takes up full screen space and traps the opponent in any hit of him. Not to mention that it lasts a lot and is punishment free. And yes, her super special is an absolute anti air. Can I make the shock that she's the samurai team girl from the KF15 now? No? Okay. That is the definition of it hurts as much as it looks. With big buttons, a cheating overhead on her running kick and thrust on her shops. This move is a hit confirm, unlike in KOF, only works forward and also seems to drive the opponent into the corner. And the command grab is pretty simple in itself. The hammer is the best and the worst of the charter. Depending on the time retained, we have different characteristics. When we do it, we hold the button for the position and we can move forward only. If we hold a little, it causes knockdowns. If we hold it long enough, it causes massive damage, knockdown, and even stun. Of course, it also returns projectiles. To call the ninjas, Darley has a unique disarmament move. What I like to call the Rocky Dispatcher. Yeah, no shock. It hoots all of that. And plus, she has one armor strap. Here's single gravity with the soft blade. It covers a good screen and is fairly easy to Plus, it serves as an anti-air. With rage, 
it will cause an extra impact when landing even if we don't confirm the first hits. Her weapon flick technique is an excellent anti-air. While her super special can also serve as an anti-air. Wu broke a shield to the fire and if you don't respect it, it's going to sun you a lot. Her bottles are nothing spectacular, but they will be useful to move the opponent away. Which is practically all you will do in the game. The projectile has three creations decided by the force of the light. They cross the entire screen. Then we have an anti-air that covers a huge area around it. The trap is a multi-hit that lasts a few moments and allows you to follow it on fall. C, B, O, D, 3. Dragon's Flames are an excellent follow out to confirm mediums or move away with the heavy on block. And yes, it's a shield, of course, it has to have a projected reflex. The Flames are also the signature move and will give you some extra damage in itself. Our weapon flip technique is friendly called Chicken Leg. I'll throw this clear a dragon and it's huge and it's fast. While the super special technique turns out to be a decent anti-air. And since I mentioned TLD free, I not key. This eliminates everyone except Herbert. Smiley to cheer for, for such a bloody game is a mid-range sonner specialized in occupying uncomfortable screen space. All her buttons are similar or identical to her sister Nakoruru, but better check them properly. No weapon required for overhead. If you see the bounces of the wall, so do you. This ice reminiscent of another character can be used for follow-ups, but you have to find it on your own. Her mind projector has very handy mid-range cover from top to the bottom. The ice stab goes in all three directions and shares some input with a similar mode, 
de The Big Ice Spy. The Floating Island is a very curious control move. For starter, it's a double jump for practical purposes. But the entire island is a walking damage box. And no, you can't stay there forever. You can take advantage of it from a cassette overhead. If we use it to match it a bit, we have a sharp point of multiple ice spikes with not bad damage and boss effect. The anti-air is an incredibly fast pick and hit several times. It's a big ice impossible to jump that will take everything that crosses the screen. Finally, the super special can serve as an anti-air, but it doesn't hit as high as it does. Tired of throwing projectiles, then it's time to throw a sharp blade spinning all over the place. Basara is a thick character due to two factors, catching upon a guard and cheating with his claws. Plus, you can run, you dash. With his parity of unique neutrals, bouncing of walls, is part of his aerial game. Throwing the blade is your most common move and you better remember the patterns of the ground and in the air, all to punish mistakes. We have a traditional projector with a non-traditional movement and low speed. Useful for pressuring the opponent's own force blocks. A teleport that allows you to get away with certain situations, but I suggest that you practice that so you don't get caught in recovery. The stone to the head can be quite useful to force the opponent away from us. Uh, with some match strength, incredibly, we have a common grab for those really milling moments. But without a doubt, the most difficult thing are the clones. Basara can throw illusion of himself in all directions he chooses. And it's all part of his plan to force wrong attacks and punish them. Yes, the clone can even walk away. It's incredibly complete. The anti air requires some precision because while it works vertically, horizontally it needs to be measured at least three times. Still, it is a single move and is a great punishment for projectiles due to its ring and damage. The weapon field technique is a bit curious, although it's a hidden opinion, it will be launched from a little behind its current position. 
which requires some practice to use it, but at least it will be far away in case of block. This super special is a huge free anti-air area. Did you want the fire charter? You found the fire charter. His weapon and shader are quite handy with a great Mexican uppercut, but be careful when attempting air attacks, as you will need to use his air command to attack on the ground. Yes, he is a ninja. How many ninjas are in this game? His projector is standard, but it does its job. We have an anti air. It's hit confirmed. It's not a crap. Don't be fooling. But the real reversal is the explosion and recoil. Probably the most eye catching technique because of how your legs are scattered there. Now for the royal magic. Kazuki has to charge to attack. Hence, the hidden rhyme. If you overdo, it will simply be a surprise that he didn't this and you will be exposed, obviously. The fireball does what you imagine. If you use light, nothing happens. If you use medium, it will use one charge, and if you use heavy, we will spend all at once. This affects uh, our fireball, so to speak, and also our anti air. But not the defensive explosion, this remains the same. There is one last use drop. If we are taken down, we can perform a suppressed attack with our ray speed. It's not much damage, but it's to avoid Poki. The signature move is the anti air, and yes, it also enchants with the charge, so the damage is huge. The Web of the Technique is a hit config advancing all the screen, as direct as Kazuki. And the Super Special is a great anti tank Consistency in weapons and wafu are not things that go hand in hand. Nature does subtly but dignity. Wafu is a big rock in more ways than one with a lot of damage everywhere.
Like Yoshiro, he can walk crouching with leads to his punch having a good defense. The most emblematic move with the dub is literally throwing the weapon at the opponent, which will give you some extra option when it comes to unarmed buttons. The range varies depending on the button and can even cause cross. By taking advantage of his U weapon, we can drop our opponent without any problems, and depending on the strength, the amount of hits. Assuming again we don't have our weapon, we have a common grab only available unarmed. You know, to push your opponent away. One foot refused to take damage, so he generated to himself. Yes, he can generate rage to himself. If you're going to do this more than once, make sure it's not when you already have rage, which brings us to his single technique, his anti-air. The weapon of the technique is the pillar throw, to no one surprise. But it caused two hits, both in the air and when touching the ground. Very useful when catching incomplete blocks. Be careful it does not affect in melee. But yes, it's so high and active that it can also catch people jumping. His super special technique is a hit confirm running. No big deal. Little Shoto is not going to use his sword because it's clearly not as good as an idea as you might think. Shizumaru is a Shoto with a huge direct attack pressure, passing on his cute umbrella. He can bounce of walls, very agile. His projectile, far from impressing, can serve as a long distance punishment. But turning the umbrella with his hand can generate a pressure too complicated to make just defend, so it is be feared. Reflecting projectile like Rain makes you offensive game better or strong. And with a little bit of negative hedge, we can make a push into the corner with a decent damage. For more Umbrella needs, we can do our best any poppy imitation and follow it up with a stomp to the head or even a dive attack. You can be Shoto if you don't have an anti air they say, with a good amount of hits even. Like his master Haomaru, this strike is his trademark and leads to many more hits. The web of the technique is a multi-hit break throw that any hit leads to confirmation and a huge attack box. But it does not go through as much state as others.
On the other hand, his super special is a projectile that not only crosses the entire screen but also ignores enemy projectiles. The idea of bringing a bow to a sword fight sounds excellent to you. Mina is a shot towards Soner, for obvious reasons, with quite comfortable buttons and much simpler game plan than you might imagine. With her obvious agility, she is also a member of the Boasting of Worlds club. To start with, we can push our opponent away with this super useful double combo. Like any Sonder, repositioning is important, and for this, we have triangle pirouette. Run away, get close, get very close. I told you it was a shoto, so we have a kickable and the air. If there's one thing Sonnets like to do, it's to have reflex, and Mina is no exception. But let's get to the fun stuff, arrows. It's not difficult, a throw requires practice. The arrow has three stages and angles, standing, down and in the air. Here the same thing begins. They have strengths. Depending on how low we are with the arrow ready, how much damage it will do, and cause knockdown. And the big bad here is the time. If we are too long, it will release and do less damage. If we shoot load upwards, it will not fall. Of course, we can cancel the arrow at any time if it was the idea. There is usually not much time for this against rushes. We can even skip while preparing in these cases, in both direction and shoot downwards. This is probably the most complex tricks in the arsenal, and will require the most practice. Obviously, the rage move is the arrow, unsurprisingly with the best damage and maximum charge. The weapon flicking is a melee hit confirm and is not a very good anti air. Although his super special doesn't look like anything out of this world, it has a big range and that can be useful for long distance punish. The water brother who must use too much shampoo in the shower doesn't differ as much as you might imagine. His buttons have an exceptional range and he practically punishes for free almost everything. He really likes water. Altro, his strong cut is the most peculiar of all, with all that, be careful with use it. Cut 
They are brothers. They are ninjas. Free entrance to the Wall Bones Club. Soketsu's projectile is a big bubble, which can also control in exit. The strength makes it come out in different positions and does damage on impact. And yes, you can put it behind the opponent. Then we have a teleport, a more sonar mission. The distance are away, to the face, or to the back, regardless of where it is down from. I have an anti-air that works as an area in front of Sogetsu with a move him. It has three ranges, so it's a matter of measuring all the time. Be careful, it does not reach the end of the screen. This ended is his signature move and increase the hits on rage. The weapon flicking is an advance across the screen multi hit config. Quite risky. That opponent will have to block completely or jump. As something more dangerous, his super special move is a low blow for the whole screen. Ouch. If you are a Street Fighter player, I have good news. This chapter is for you. No, seriously. Hiroha practically looks like she strikes out of the game. Her attacks are pretty honest, covering most of the range, even Mexican uppercut. Also, she can't run, so we will only have dashes that can't be cancelled in attacks. Counting of this nice command. I'll throw she decides to be a Shamaru partner when it comes to double champs. We have a fast, small, but efficient projectile that evens aim to the air or can be used to the ground. A multi hit semi tatsu, good enough to push into corner and yes, also in the air. Caspari, something by good news that we will require practice for coffee. Like all Shoto, has an anti air, but it has works in peculiar way moving both horizontally and diagonally. And why not in the air? This is the signature move, but it only affects strong hits as it usually happens, so it can be quite difficult to confirm in the air. The weapon flip technique is a multi-hit spin that keeps the hitting from behind. It's an excellent anti-air and we can also move during the sequence. And as a screen it sounds, the super special is a command grab. 
Golden. We all agree that his soldier is not going to pick him because of that. And you're going to keep him because I can confirm right now that he has the most damage in Neutras in the entire game. Warden makes up from his lack of honor with his, some spectacular neutral buttons, puts this in his best definition. And I'm serious about the life movement, he has only two. The fear is the charge. If we take the maximum, it will break the defense and give us the possibility of combo. The other option is a universal rifle. Yes, it's a parry and a rifle. Very complete. Obviously, the bull charge is his signature move. The Magic of Warden is his target combo. It is full of wreckers between neutral hits and on paper they are very simple. But the more complicated, the more you need to memorize them. As you will notice, not all of them are complete combos. There are strong blows in between, feints, return to safety blocking, etc. The weapon fit technique is a single hit with full distance. No, don't even try it with an anti-air. The super special, the Morhau, is not a good anti-air either, but it has good range. If you think it's impossible to put your favorite character in X game, ask where Kong Sun Lui comes from. Despite her short arsenal, she has very handy neutrals, even unarmed, and it is her game plan. If you see another character with an umbrella, she does not need the weapon to have unique neutrals, which you will need to know. We can throw this umbrella that does light damage to various positions on the screen, for all kinds of set play. Or throw ourselves. The trick is that we will always return to the position of the static umbrella. For my Sony, we have a projectile, which, spoiler alert, she's a shooter in a MOBA. How the work is simple, you throw the projectile. If it hits, you win a charge. After 3 charge, whenever you hit or not, you will launch an explosive version. Yes, this is the signature move and does respect all damage. The 
Weapon Flick Technique is a very practical anti air. While the Super Special will come around the umbrella. Quite difficult to aim. Tam Tam, little sister, dedicates her game plan to using a boomerang. So, guess what we do will do. That's right, Demo Flip! The neutrals are quite short and fast, with the exception of the strong one, which is boomerang. One especially useful is the strong running, since it's a cross like Hanson. The jungle girl is a member, of course, of Bouncing of the World's Clone. The Scratch is our only combo tool, and basically serves to push the opponent away. And the demo flip starts. It's three angles of period with three possible moves. You have to calculate exactly where you're going to fall when doing this. The fifth one is a command one. A simple overhead. And finally, the confirmed low. The interesting thing is that this low hit will chase. But it will even do it on the opponent's back. The boomerang throw goes forward or diagonal. It has a curious fab, and that is that is similar to Shismaru. It leaves unarmed for a brief moment. But be careful, it's quite unsafe as any project. With rage, it will not only hit more and give you some more time, but it can even defeat enemy projectiles. The Warp of Litany reach full speed and hey, but unfortunately it is still possible to jump over it. And the Super Special is a hit confirmed ruining the whole screen, the mother of all the box. Well, there is no other last play, but at least here is Hibiki, and she is very strong. Hibiki is a rooster with impressive startups and a short to medium range. This overhead by itself is nothing more than a hit, but if we charge it to the max, it becomes super cancelable. Then we have the run. This is Hibiki running. And this is the run. As you can see, visually they are the same, 
It doesn't stop, and we can cancel it or attack at any time. Both switch side and front of Zekta. Then we have the counter-attack, or rather, the parry. From here we have two options, to cut or hit. Yes, they are cancelable in combat. The signature technique is the fast cut. It can be low or medium, and in case of rage, it will be two medium. The weapon flick technique is her own isn't. It can be a good full range hit combo. Her super special works an anti air. And now a secret. Press on Hibiki, kick. With the releasing, choose with light cut. I don't know what's more curious to know, that they don't know he's a man, or that his hands are so His devastating range makes him a threat ball on the ground and in the air, although his gravity is also very low like that. Yes, I say air. He bounces of walls. This we have the bombardment. It does no damage on exit, but it provides a large sector in the air and we can delay the fall. It has several aim positions, so keep in mind to make sure it will not cross. Teleport for all our sonar scenarios. Slapping is our best way to get away from the point and can be done without a weapon. On double A, the cheapest and therefore most annoying move in the arsenal is this speed that launches the point through the air and it's an overhead. Or hello! Very difficult to read. The standard projectile is a Makusa signature ability and only changes in speed, not damage. In rage, it will do 7 hits. The weapon flick technique is a single hit with a good range on the spot. And following the torture, the super special is also a mid range low. The likelihood that you start the video here is huge, so hello, she literally is biking in Guilty Gear XR. And attacking like 90% serious. Pretty much everything she does there, she does here. Her neutrals are identical as she can do an armed overhead. She has the famous 6P and an armed personal anti-air. 
target combo of two hits with medium and heavy dash. And then we're running. And in the air, the cannon. In addition, in the air, there is also a target combo. The Damigaishi can be used on the ground and in the air. It can stop projectiles and throw the opponent on impact. Let's move on to the parry. Parry has four options. Stab. Add the aerial. Switch side. And attack switch side. Be careful, racing at the wrong time or making a mistake will always be a counterattack. If we use the running version, we can do exactly the same, but we will also have armor. Viking can use a hiding cloud to lure his opponent, horizontally or diagonally. From here, there are again several options, even in block or whip. Command grab. Add here continuation. And hit with knockdown. The signature technique is the Shosen Set, an anti air from the air. It can be done in Tiger Knee. And in Rage, you will hit four times. The disarming technique is 3 attacks moving forward, it can hit air, but it's not good as anti air. And finally, her super special is a possible single anti air feedback. That's a simple summary of all characters. Every move and basic idea covered. Of course, and in a way of express myself, at the beginning and through each chapter. It's far from being a real guy, and this will simply help you to know who to choose and what they can do. And then you go to train to learn it to use it. Practicing defense, range, range management, and metal footsies is what will lead you to victories. Thank you very much for everyone's collaboration, and I hope you have as much fun as I did doing this guide where I discovered a lot more than I imagined. Shabuari!